I want to welcome you to our online worship service. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, share this video with others, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need somebody to pray for you, contact us. If you would like to learn more about God's plan for your life and receive Bible studies, contact us. We're here to serve you. And don't forget that every Saturday, at 9.30, we have our outdoor worship service, of course, when the air quality is good, uh, for parents and children in our parking lot, and for adults and youth in our courtyard. It's a real blessing. We want to hear from you. Leave us a message. You can email us. You can call us. We And also, don't forget that every Friday at 6.30 is our food pantry. We're here to be a blessing to our community. And on Tuesdays, we have our online prayer meeting. Come join us and let's continue to worship the Lord together in spirit and in truth. God bless you. An hour outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, is a town called Valdez. It's a very interesting town of a population of 4,500 people. You see, this town has an interesting name. Um, Valdez comes from the term Waldensian. You see, there were 29 Waldensian immigrants 
that immigrated from the Cottian Alps in northern Italy to this area of North Carolina, Carolina and founded the town of Aldis. I have read that many of the inhabitants today are still of Waldensian origin. This town takes its heritage seriously. Um, there is a Waldensian heritage museum in that town that shares where this people come from and the religious persecution that they experienced from their country of origin. There is also an uh, a ways um, in the same town, a ways from the Waldensian Heritage Museum, is something called the Trail of Faith, which has outdoor exhibits of Waldensian history from their country of origin. The Waldenses um, means people of the valley. They were they lived in northern Italy. They were ancient Christians um, who actually never left Rome, never separated from Rome because they were never part of Rome. They were the first peoples of Europe to receive a translation of the Bible in their own tongue. They existed uh, many years before the Protestant Reformation. Uh, in fact, hundreds of years before the Protestant Reformation, they possessed the Bible in their native tongue. And they were called, they were referred to as the people of the book. In fact, they were the first people to translate the entire Bible into the French language. Before I share a little bit more about the story of this ancient people, let's have a pause and let's ask the Lord to guide us. Let's pray. Father, we lift up our hearts and minds to you, asking that you will bless this message, that you will speak to our hearts, and that you will make us more like you. Bless us with your salvation, bless us with understanding, and with the presence of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week, I shared with you the story of Richard Wormbrand, a Romanian pastor who lived during the Nazi occupation of Romania and the subsequent communist Russian occupation of Romania. He wrote a book describing his 14-year imprisonment called Tortured for Christ. I shared with you spiritual lessons about the faithful, faithfulness of not only Pastor Warmbrand, but his wife who was also imprisoned, and the faithfulness of the Bible-believing Christians at that time. And so today I want to share with you about the story of the ancient Waldenses. I really am just scratching the surface because I am um, was so impressed by the story of Richard Wormbrand that I uh, also studied about the story of the Waldenses, and their story is very much similar to the story of Richard Wormbrand. You see, the Waldenses... Many people think that the one who started the Waldenses was a man by the name of Peter Waldo. But actually, he united with the Waldenses, and it appears to me that they accepted him as their leader at that time. I believe it was in the 12th century. But the Waldenses existed before Peter Waldo. In fact, one of the early names that people gave to the Waldenses was in Sabati. In Sabati means that they were Sabbath keepers. Um, the Waldenses were a primitive Christian group that, like I said, were the first peoples of Europe to obtain a copy of the Bible. They lived by the Bible. Um, 
like I said, they were referred to as the people of the book. You know, that's a lesson for us today as believers. God is calling us also to be people of the book. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You see, that the Bible was the foundation of the religion of the Waldensian people. And it should be the foundation of believers today. Uh, their faith and practice was based completely on the Bible, referring to the Waldensian Christians. And it should be the same with us today. The Waldenses weren't just content to maintain their ancient faith in the high above in the mountains in northern Italy and to maintain that faith for themselves. They actually sent out missionaries from their homeland into many parts of Europe. They started a small Bible college, a small missionary training center called College of the Bards. It still exists today, all made out of stone. And it's a very, you can Google it. Um, you, there are many documentaries about the Waldenses. But in the College of the Barbs, they copied the Bible by hand. You see, this was way before the invention of the, print, of the printing press. And, and those students were engaged in copying the Bible word by word, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. They memorized large portions of the Bible so that when they were persecuted and their writings were destroyed, they had the word of God in their minds and in their hearts. That's another lesson I would like to bring out to us today. You know, memorizing scripture is not just something for little children. It is something that God invites youth and adults to engage in as well. You know, King David said in Psalm 119, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. You see, God's word changes us from the inside out. And I think we should also make an effort to memorize as much scripture as we can, not just for our own personal walk with the Lord and to be more effective in our witness for the Lord. But you never know. Maybe one day we will not have access to Bibles, just like Richard Wormbrand that I talked about last week. Bibles were taken away from believers. He spent 14 years in communist prison and had no Bible, but they had the Bible right here. They had the Bible in their minds and in their hearts. God invites us to do the same thing today. Uh, the Waldensian parents um, taught their children the scriptures. They taught their children to memorize scriptures and, and large portions of scripture were committed to memory. Whole gospels were committed to memory by the Waldensians. It's an invitation for us today. They trained missionaries at the College of the Barbs and sent out missionaries to England, Scotland, France, Spain, Germany, Czech Republic, Poland, Lithuania, Bulgaria, and Croatia. They sent, they sent out students to, uh, they sent out certain young people to be students at different universities throughout Europe, not just to further their education, but to be clandestine missionaries, to be undercover missionaries. In fact, they would sow uh, copies of the scripture, they would hide copies of the scripture in their clothes, and, and they were sewed inside of their clothes. And whenever they found hearts that were open and people that were receptive, they would share God's word with people and win fellow students to the gospel of Jesus Christ and to the word of God. They sent out merchants uh, from their homeland to many parts of Europe who were also undercover missionaries who would sell things that it was not easy for people to get 
in their in their lands, um, in their in their in their local areas. And since the Waldensians traveled to many parts of Europe, they were able to bring many many articles that people could not get at at local at in their local area. And whenever hearts were open, and whenever people were open, they would share the greatest treasure that they had, which was more, which was of more value than gold, silver, silks, jewels, whatever. And it was the word of God. I hope that we cherish the word of God as much as those people did back then. Um, that we make the time to study it that we make the time to memorize it, that we choose to live by every word that is found in it. Now's not the, the time to embrace tradition. Now is the time to embrace truth. The Waldensians did not embrace tradition. They embraced the truth during that time, and it's an example for us today. Let me share with you a little bit about the Waldensian beliefs. They denied the supremacy of Rome. They rejected image, image worship as idolatry. And, they, and many of them kept the true Sabbath, which is Saturday, the seventh day of the week, according to the Bible. Now, um, you can read about this in the book, The Great Controversy. It's a wonderful book. Um, written by Ellen White. And in the fourth chapter of that book is a chapter on the Walden Seas. It's called The Walden Seas. There's many uh, good books about the history of the Walden Seas. There's many good documentaries on YouTube about the Walden Seas. I invite you to get to know who these people were, what they suffered for. They were a persecuted people. In fact, in 1487, Pope Innocent VIII ordered the extermination of the Waldenses. And I could share many other dates and atrocities that they suffered, but they were willing to suffer for their faith. They believed that they were not willing to compromise their faith when Rome gained its supremacy. Many people did. Many Waldenses did compromise, but many remained fast to the teachings of the Bible and continued to live their apostolic faith that they had received way before the supremacy of Rome. In 1655, 1,700 Waldenses were killed by Catholic forces commanded by the Duke of Savoy. There's many other persecutions that I could mention. Thousands of Waldenses had been persecuted and have suffered a martyr's death. They died for their beliefs because at that time, if you were not part of the popular church, you were excommunicated, you were persecuted, you were tortured for your faith. You know, um, I'm preaching this message uh, to all, uh, specifically to my church, the Dinuba Seventh-day Adventist Church. And the, one of the co-founders of our church, Ellen White, um, the author of the book, The Great Controversy, also wrote an interesting statement in the book, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 400. And I direct these words specifically to you, my friends. It says, it would be well for all our workers to study the history of the Waldensian missionaries and to imitate, did you hear that? To imitate their example of sacrifice and self-denial. Did you hear that? An invitation to study the history of the Waldensian missionaries. You see, missionaries still exist today. Missionaries should exist today. But I'm not just talking about missionaries that will, that will push tradition. I'm talking about missionaries that will propagate 
truth that is found only in the Holy Bible. I'm not talking about missionaries that will promote other books as the foundation of their faith. No, I'm talking about missionaries that will only promote the Bible as the foundation of their faith. I'm not against, I'm obviously not against reading other Bible-based Christian books, and I, and, and I promote them, like I've already mentioned. But God is calling us in 2020 to be missionaries like the Walden Seas were missionaries. The Walden Seas knew that there was a price to be paid for their testimony, for their witness, just like Richard Wormbrand and the Christians during the time of the communist Russian takeover of Romania. They knew there was a price to be paid for sharing their faith. But my friends, it really speaks to my heart. They were willing to pay the price. The Waldensian missionaries were also willing to pay the price. Are we, I ask myself, am I willing to pay the price to be a missionary for Jesus Christ and for his truth in today's day and age? I pray that my, that my answer by God's grace is yes, and I pray that your answer will be yes as well with God's help and his blessing. That's why I'm sharing with you, just scratching the surface about the history of this people that for a thousand years maintained faith in the Bible in, in simplicity and in uh, sincerity. And they didn't just want to maintain their faith in the high up in the mountains and the Alps, but they knew that Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. They knew what Jesus said in Matthew 28. By the way, that was in Mark 16, 16. They knew what it said in Matthew 28. Go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That they believed in those words. And that same missionary mandate is for believers today because the mission has not yet been fulfilled. They fulfilled their mission, don't get me wrong, but we also have a mission today to preach every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God from Genesis to Revelation and everything in between. In fact, it says in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6, a verse that describes God's people in the last days and the message that God is calling them to share. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6. It says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, and tongue, and people. This is describing God's people in the last days, sharing God's message. And it says in verse 7, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. So in the last days, God's people will be preaching the gospel and announcing the hour of God's judgment. And in verse 8, it says, And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. God's people in the last days will be preaching the gospel, and they will be preaching that Babylon is fallen. And according to Revelation 18, it says, Come out of her, my people.
that you do not receive of her plagues. And, and so God's people in the last days will be including this message in their gospel preaching, in their gospel presentation. And then verse 9, it says, Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, this he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Once again, a, a, a verse describing God's people in the last days, preaching the gospel, but also warning people not to receive the mark of the beast that we read about in Revelation chapter 13. I mentioned last week as I shared the story about Richard Wormbrandt, that what Richard Wormbrand experienced and his associates in Romania is what Bible-believing, born-again Christians are going to experience just before the second coming of Christ. Persecution will once again rear its ugly head, not just in uh, one country, but all throughout the world. You read about that in Revelation chapter 13. But God is going to have a people in the last days. And it says in Revelation 14, 12, the verse that describes them, this people are going to be like the Walden Seas. They're going to, the Walden Seas were like the church in the time of the apostles. And God's people in the last days are going to be like the church in the time of the apostles and the church in the time of the Walden Seas. It says in Revelation 14, verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Their faith will be based on nothing else but the word of God. You may be wondering, what about the Walden Seas today? There are 30,000 Walden Seas in the Waldensian Evangelical Church in Italy, and some 15,000 Walden Seas in Uruguay and Argentina. It's interesting that in 2015, Pope Francis, uh, the first pope to visit a Waldensian church, publicly asked forgiveness on behalf of the Catholic Church, uh, asked forgiveness uh, from the Waldensian church. And I actually will quote what he said, and uh, it is a kind gesture. It says, on behalf of the Catholic Church, I ask forgiveness for the unchristian and even inhumane positions and actions taken against you historically. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us. And they did forgive their enemies. Just like Richard Wormbrand in the time of Romania did not hold resentment to his persecutors. The Waldensian leaders do not hold resentment against their persecutors, even though it's been uh, thousands of years, um, uh, uh, more than a thousand years since these horrible atrocities occurred. I would like to end by sharing this thought. What is this, what, how does a story, I just want to repeat how this story applies to us today. This spoke to me as I read that chapter, chapter four in the book, The Great Controversy, entitled The Walden Seas. It ends by saying this, that chapter. Talking about the Walden Seas, it says that they planted the seeds of the Reformation that began in the time of Wycliffe, a Protestant reformer, John Wycliffe, in England. They planted the seeds of the Reformation that began in the time of Wycliffe, grew broad and deep in the days of Luther. You've heard of Martin Luther, the great German Protestant reformer grew broad and deep in the days of Luther. Now listen to this. 
and is to be carried forward to the close of time by those who also are willing to suffer all things for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. Wow. The Reformation did not begin in the time of Luther. In fact, the Waldenses existed hundreds of years before the Reformation began. They did unite with the Protestant Reformers. But the Reformation did not end in the time of Luther. And when the Protestant Church is separated from the Church of Rome, the Protestant Reformation is to be continue, is to is to be carried forward today. We God is calling us as believers to continue this work that the Waldensians, that the Waldenses began many years ago. But it says we need to be willing to suffer all things for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Wow. Only by God's grace is that possible. I invite you to get to know the story of this special people, and I invite you to imitate their faith and their example of missionary service. We have no reason to complain today. We have no reason to criticize today. Yes, we are living in trying times, and I understand that. But me, I, 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 uh, I have no reason to complain. I have no reason to criticize because these people suffered so much to, shit, to, to maintain faith in the Bible alive during times of darkness and persecution. God is calling us to follow their example. Let's make the decision to do so with God's blessing and God's help. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Um, leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought about this message. We want to hear from you. If you have not yet accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord, I invite you to do so right now as I end with prayer. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his death on the cross for each of our sins. We invite you, if we've never made that decision before, we invite you into our hearts as our Savior and Lord. And if we have made that decision in the past, we want to renew that decision right now. If we realize that we haven't been faithful to your word, forgive us. Make us more faithful. If we haven't been the missionaries that you're calling us to be, forgive us. Give us more missionary zeal. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. Father, help us to take advantage of the time that we have and the liberties that we have to share your word with others. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. God bless you.